downside is each question is worth a lot because there aren't that many questions. So you want to make sure that you know what's going on. All right, so here we go. First word problem is Chandler, we do the project in 10 hours. Mora helps, it takes eight. How long does it take Mora alone? All right, so what's your strategy here? One over 10 plus one over X equals one over eight. So one over alone plus one over alone equals one over together, right? So we start filling in what we know and let's see. 1 over 10, uh, if Mora helps, it takes 8 hours, so Mora alone, is that what you said? Yep. All right, what are we using as a common denominator? ADX. We could use ADX, we could use 40X, we could use lots of different things, but I'll use 80, so I need an 8 and an X here, and an 80 here, and an 8 and a 10. So 8x plus 80 equals 10x. That look okay to everybody? So 80 equals 2x and x equals 40 hours. And it takes her 40 hours to do the project. What's going on back there? What's the matter? Well, why don't you take your arms out of the thing and start taking good notes here? Are you cold, baby boy? Well, why don't we wear a uniform sweatshirt then so that we can wear it in class and be warm? I had a watch it, so I decided Alright, what's our strategy for the last one? Amount percent. Amount times percent. Amount times percent. Okay, so here we go. How much? 53% should be mixed with a 30% to get 12 gallons of a 45%. So I kind of just filled everything in as I went. Would everybody agree I got things where they belong? So every time we do this, we end up with one parenthesis that's empty. This time it's right here. Sometimes it's right here. What do we put in it when it's right here? 12 minus 12 minus 12 minus 12 6. It's gotta be the number first. <coughs> now when it's add, it doesn't matter. It has to be the number first. When did you get here? Yeah, uh, I emailed you. I like accidentally looked at, uh, I thought it was third ones because I thought one started with my last class. Yeah, I know it sounds really dumb. It does because you're a senior in high school. Yeah. So you went to two lunches? I did. Super. You guys just can't make it easy on me, can you? I'm sorry. It's all right. It's what I get paid for. All right, so 0.5, so I forget what I was saying. When the blank is here, it's 12 minus x. Yeah. When the blank is here, it's 12 plus, plus x, <laughs> right? So it's, it never changes, so don't get confused by it. It's like that every single time. So now we're just gonna get our calculators out and do our arithmetic. Um, this is this one is a distribute. So 3.6 minus 0.30x equals 5.4. So then I can combine these. So 0.23x. These two together. Over, I am going to need a calculator for this one. Um, 
So 1.8 over 0.23. What did you say? 7.8. 7.8. And that would be gallons or gallons. Yep, gallons. Sometimes it's quarts, sometimes it's cups, sometimes it's whatever. This one is gallons. Okay? So we just today now took the test again. That's exactly what's on it. So with that in mind, I want you to tell me, look at your quizzes, look at your homeworks, and I turn back. And I will do whatever you need to do. I'm going to go ahead and give you right now your chapter three homework and notes. So find what you need us to do. Thank you. And I will do it. These are your chapter three materials. So these get the way so we're starting chapter three. How far into A period you leave? About 25. 25 minutes into the period? Yes. Yeah, that's not long enough to take the test. So I guess you can do it. I don't know when you can come back from the parade. We will be back at Right as, like as. Okay, so you can take it after school. If that doesn't work, you'll have to come in for office hours. Yeah, office hours. And then, so you can take it after school tomorrow if. Friday. Or actually, you can take it after school tomorrow. Or you can take it during office hours on Friday. Yeah. Well, that's about it. Did everybody get a homework packet? Okay. Then I have one more. It's an extra practice thing I want you to have because we need practice with our exponents. Um, so basically, whenever these people show up is when. equation. We're going to find all of the asymptotes, intercepts, holes. So how do I start? Factor. And how does it factor? Uh, top would be plus 3 minus 1. Yeah, plus x three. plus 3, x minus 1. Now, when you take that guess and you write that down, what is the next thing you're going to do? Check it. Check it. You're going to boil it back and make sure you are right. 
This is right. Okay, then what? What's the bottom? Plus five minus one. Plus five minus one. And again, you're going to check it to be absolutely sure it is right. Okay, so now what? So these will cancel. So our equation is simply x plus 3 over x plus 5. Alright, so we've got to start putting stuff in the picture now. Vertical asymptote x equals negative 5. Vertical asymptote is x equals negative 5 because the bottom that zero. makes the bottom 0. And vertical asymptotes happen when the denominator is 0. zero. And there's a horizontal right. at 1. What else? Horizontal at 1. Horizontal asymptote is at 1. Y equals 1. Apologies. Because we box them in. And look, it says Y equals 1. Right. <coughs> what else? <coughs> y-intercept is 3 over 5 because how do you find a y-intercept? You x let x be 0. zero. And if you let x be 0, you get 3 fifths. x-intercept at negative 3. x-intercepts at negative 3 because if you put in negative 3 for x, you get 0 for y. That's the x-intercept from the numerator. Hole at one. We have two a hole. Thirds. We knew that because we canceled. What will the x value be? One. One. one if we plug in one, we get four six. over six, two thirds. which is two thirds. Mm -hmm. So I have a hole at one, comma, two thirds. One comma two thirds, and this is zero comma five thirds. Or, uh, three thirds. Okay. Now that's it. So now we just sketch it in. It looks this this side's pretty easy because I got these points right here. Remember, the curve has to go through whatever you plotted, and then you've got one on. Side, right? Can I help? Yes, Alright, who else has something? Homework or quiz or just something? Sorry, never mind. I... Picking zero gives me three 
and then negative two squared is four. Is three times four bigger than zero? Yep. <coughs> So we can just say negative three to infinity. It's the whole thing shaded. The one we just did, I think it was one of the ones we did, that dot was open. And if that's open, then you would have to do this as a piece, and then union this as a piece. But since it's colored in, we can get away with that. Okay, all right, what else? Our choices. We can either click on this or we can start chapter three. I love logarithms. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. That's next. So, somebody out here has a question, has to have a question. Jude? Can you do uh, another one of the inequalities but with the synthetic division? Yep. Good. This one looks good. There you go. Didn't that work? Right? Now what? And how does that factor? That's this right here, the quotient, right? How does that factor? X plus two plus one. Which means my dots are at negative two, negative one, and four. Everybody okay with that? So what happens now? Pick a number. Pick a number. I think I'll use my zero. Zero gives me two times one times negative four. 
2 times 1 times negative 4. Is that less than 0? Yes. Shaded. And if that one's shaded, so is this one? Mm -hmm. So negative infinity to negative 2, or negative 1 to I'm going to give you one um, to do on your paper there by yourself or with your partner or something. How about this one? Got an answer, got better than a thought. Let me write your answer down and we're going to see if it's right. What do you have? Uh, I have, so I have my number line answer? Yeah, just write your final answer, like uh, that, this right here. That, okay. So that would be negative 4, the parentheses, comma, 11, bracket. So what do you think the answer is? Oh. I have no idea. Let's check it out and see. Uh, I got here some yeses. That's awesome. Yeah, if it's right, it's awesome. All right. So the first thing we do is subtract the two. If you did anything else, be ready to get your paper back with a big X and no partial credit because this is the only way to start the problem. Okay, guys? Get zero. Get zero. When you see that symbol, get zero. Okay? Now, what was the next thing you would think of? Um, the next thing is a common denominator of x plus 4. x plus 4. So then, you kept your denominator as x plus 4, and your numerator was all of this stuff. Negative 2x minus 8. Which then was x minus 11 over x plus 4? Are you starting to see where his numbers came from up there? Because this says we're going to have a dot at negative 4 and a dot at 11. The negative 4 will never be closed in because denominators cannot equal 0. But the 11 can be closed in. So then what number did you pick? Uh, zero. Zero. Of course you did. It's the best. So we pick zero, and we get negative 11 fourths. 
is negative 11 fourths less than zero. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yep, so we shade it. And his answer is exactly right. So good job to those of you that got that right. <coughs> okay? All right, one more quick problem. Friday. 